<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're actually making a compound known as potassium chlorate, which is an extremely powerful oxidizer, and um, I have a few planned uses for it, and it's just a pretty fun chemical in general. Um, now, t there's several different ways to approaching it, and the most efficient would be electrolysis of potassium chloride solution. However, the, um, for one, that generates chlorine gas, although that wouldn't be the main problem. Um, it needs to be done at elevated temperatures, and uh, typically with a platinum electrode, because uh, most other electrodes will actually corrode. Now, the platinum electrodes are expensive, and I don't have any right now, so that's not too much of a viable option for me. So, instead, today we're actually going to be making it from bleach. Now, typical bleach contains something like calcium hypochlorate or uh, sodium hypochlorate, and um, the whichever hypochlorate that you have, um, we can actually, uh, by boiling it down, we can turn it into um, calcium or sodium hypochlorite. And by doing a double displacement reaction with potassium chloride, you could actually form potassium chlorate. Now, um, this uh, potassium chloride here can be found as salt-free salt at places like Thrifty's, um, or at somewhere like Home Hardware, you can actually buy huge bags of potassium chloride um, salt for salting your roads or whatnot. And uh, a huge bag of it's like $20 there, which is incredibly cheap considering this thing was like $13 for 300 grams, where you could buy 20 pounds of it for $20. Um, that was, I bought this before I knew I could get it so cheap somewhere else, so I'm gonna run out and buy it some of that once as soon as I get rid of this. But um, yeah. So this bleach here does contain sodium hypochlorite, and uh, it's not a full bottle, but that shouldn't matter. So, I'm going to first turn on my fume hood so that dangerous bleach fil fumes don't, well, they're not too dangerous, but my room doesn't get filled with bleach fumes. Then, we'll take this uh, one liter beaker here and fill it up to probably between 800 and 1,000 milliliters of bleach. Doesn't really matter how much, but um, yeah. Then we're going to go ahead and boil it down. So I'll measure out some bleach, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, hopefully it's not too noisy, I have my fume hood on now, but um, okay, so we have one liter of bleach here and we're going to have to boil it down. Now the calcium or sodium hypochlorite in the uh, bleach, um, when boiled down, should actually just, uh, well, it'll decompose into uh, sodium or calcium chloride, and then sodium or calcium chlorate, depending on if you're using a sodium or calcium based bleach. Um, anyhow, so we're going to boil this down until we just start to see um, crystals or something forming. Um, there's no definite amount um, that how far you have to boil it down is all bleach or most bleach is uh, different percentages by weight. This particular one is uh, four percent uh, sodium hypochlorate by weight. But um, anyhow, when it de de or disproportionates into the uh, sodium or calcium hypochlorate, um, that's when we'll use our potassium chloride in a double displacement reaction um, to produce the potassium chlorate. So we're gonna go ahead and boil this down until we just start to see crystals forming. And make sure to do this outside. Then I'll meet you back. So it took a fair amount of time to boil it down, but it got it down to about 200 milliliters. And um, then stuff started precipitating, so I let it cool. And much more salt precipitated out. As table salt, sodium chloride, um, which was formed in the reaction, um, is much less soluble than the um, sodium chlorate that was formed. So we now have a solution of some sodium chloride and sodium chlorate. Um, however, the dis double displacement reaction will occur with potassium chloride, forming potassium chloride and more sodium chloride. Potassium chlorate is not extremely soluble in cold water, but quite soluble in hot water, so um, it should precipitate out. But first we want to get rid of all this excess sodium chloride, so I'm going to quickly filter it into a separate jar, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after filtering it off, um, you can see we're left with a nice clear solution. I just discarded the other uh, coffee filter, and I put a new one in. So I took approximately 75 grams of um, this salt-free salt potassium chloride stuff and dissolved it into 200 milliliters of water here. It's not totally dissolved because we added a, more than would dissolve at 20 degrees Celsius, but um, that's okay because we want to make sure we have a saturated solution. So we have uh, 220 milliliters of water there, which I've dissolved that into, and um, that's about the same amount that we have in the uh, beaker over there, so the two similar amounts should hopefully be enough for the reaction to fully occur. Um, this is an, an extreme excess, we just want to make sure we react as much as possible to get the best yield as possible. Now, um, as you can see, this is still very white. It has a fine suspension of a, an anti-caking agent, which is um, magnesium sulfate and all sorts of different things that they... Um, or maybe not magnesium sulfate, what is it? 
uh, magnesium carbonate, I'm sorry, magnesium sulfate is soluble. But magnesium carbonate and calcium carbonate, which are in here, are not soluble in water. Um, so that's what we're getting is a precipitant. And it just stops the um, uh, potassium chloride chunks from clumping together um, when it's just sitting there. So we're going to have to filter this off to remove those. So I'm going to filter directly into this beaker. So I'll filter it in, and immediately the, the, immediately the double displacement reaction will occur, and we will have formed potassium chlorate, um, which will hopefully crystallize out a solution as we cool it down. So I'll add this, and as it filters in, um, that'll be good, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I added the two solutions, and as you can see, there's a uh, nice little pile of potassium chlorate crystals there. However, it's not done precipitating still at room temperature, and to get the rest of all those crystals to precipitate, we're going to have to stick it in the fridge or freezer or something, and cool it down quite a bit. Um, and the nice plate-like crystals are the exact uh, crystalline structure that potassium chlorate forms, so we are uh, quite sure that we have nice pure potassium chlorate here. So I'm going to stick this in the uh, freezer to cool it down so that we can hopefully get the rest to precipitate out, um, then we'll be able to filter it off. And we might do another recrystallization depending on what the purity of it looks. Um, hopefully any excess potassium chloride and sodium chloride produced in the reaction should stay in solution um, and only the potassium chloride should precipitate out. And because we had an excess, or sorry, potassium chlorate should precipitate out. And because we added an excess of potassium chloride, there should be no more sodium chlorate in the solution. And um, yeah, hopefully that works. So I'll stick this in the freezer for, you know, two hours or so, um, me and then I'll meet you back. Just make sure that this doesn't freeze, of course, else you'll crack your glass, which would not be very good. Okay, so, um, after that, um, the, the crystals fell out of solution, as expected, so I quickly filtered them off, and as you can see, we're left with some beautifully white, um, square-shaped crystalline potassium chlorate crystals, which are absolutely beautiful, and I vacuum filtered them. Um, and then I wash them with a teeny bit of cold water. Don't use too much though because you're gonna start dissolving some of your uh, potassium chlorate here and uh, you'll get a loss of yield. But um, the next step isn't gonna matter too too much. So this is our quite pure stuff, but um, we should be able to squeeze a bit more out of our previous solutions by taking our previous solutions and boiling them down to probably around 100 milliliters. So um, all the solution that was from that, that this potassium chlorate was crystallized out of, we're going to boil it down to about 100 milliliters, um, and then try to put it back in the freezer and see if any more will precipitate out. That will be a slightly less pure product, but still should be sli uh, slightly more, uh, or we sh should still be able to get a fair amount more than what we just have here. So um, I'm going to take this out of our filter here, and um, we'll weigh that. And in the meantime, we can go ahead and try to process our other solution. So I'll just boil it down to about 100 milliliters, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after attempting to get more of it out, um, there's no doubt in my mind that we did get more out, but it's so impure that I would never even use it. You can see, here's the solution from which we boiled down and recrystallized out, trying to get out more of our uh, potassium chlorate, but those crystals are not hexagonal, um, or square I mean, uh, like the potassium chlorate crystals are. Um, they're more of like spikes, similar to potassium nitrate crystals, which we definitely don't have any potassium nitrate. That's just a similar shape that they have. Now, I did take some of this out and um, mix it with a little bit of sugar, and it does burn, which means that there's most likely still a little bit of potassium chlorate there. Um, and here's some of the stuff that I filtered off. But it's definitely not pure potassium chlorate like this stuff is. This is highly pure potassium chlorate, and all the crystals are beautiful and uh, square-shaped. So we weighed this out, and we have uh, about 7 grams of potassium chlorate here, which is not very good considering we boiled down a whole liter of bleach to get that. Uh, potassium chlorate is just really not very viable to make in this method. Um, a much better method is actually electrolysis, but you need um, some sort of very inert electrode. Uh, carbon can be used, but it's corroded away and flakes off during the electrolysis, so uh, platinum is ideal, but I don't have any platinum right now. So I thought I'd try this method. Now, um, the other issue is that salt-free salt is quite expensive. Um, I think it was, I paid $8 for this 300 grams, whereas you could uh, pay $30 and get 20 kilograms of it um, at places like Home Hardware. And I was originally going to buy it there. Um, however, when I went to look, they don't have a shipment in until like, a couple weeks from now. So I'm going to go back in a couple weeks and um, get a big, huge 20-kilogram bag of that stuff. 
and then maybe we can start doing some electrolysis and see if we can get some potassium chlorate that way. But um, I wanted to make this video as soon as possible and didn't want to wait for a bunch of potassium chlorate to come in. Anyhow, so that's basically how to make uh, potassium chlorate through the double displacement reaction um, using uh, sodium hypochlorite based bleach. So um, yeah, potassium chlorate really useful. We'll make flash powder and stuff out of it in the future perhaps. It's lots of fun. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed. Wait, bye.